Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tier Know the Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And we are currently in a war against the National Protection Army. However, we have made an encirclement in eliminating two more divisions, which will reduce the enemy's total number of divisions up to a max two of 18. But before we get too far, I do want to address a few comments just so that I don't forget to address them later. Someone asks, can I play as Long Yun sometime and kill off the evil Republic of China? And to that, I will say absolutely. However, there's a reason why I'm playing actual the actual Republic of China first before I try out the National Protection Army. It's because I don't know how this was going to work for us. So I really want to co you know, look at Long Yun now, and then later on we'll do we'll definitely do um, Long Yun at some other point in the future. So wow, there's a lot of attack and defense. No one is doing really well. But that devastation, bleeding out, is not very good. Wow, minus 66% attack and defense. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. He's the Mad King, which is nice. The New Zealous office, Officer Staff. The Reigning of Terror as well. So, and Rapid Fortification. Plus, wow. That's pretty darn rapid. But a couple of the comments include, when TNO2 TNO comes out, play this campaign again. I probably will. I definitely want to do it because at the end of this, of spoiler alert, there is no war between us and Japan just because that's the way the, the dev... The devs like made it for now, so it is what it is. It's unfortunate, but that just means whenever TNO2 comes out, we'll come out and do it again. Uh, someone also asked, when can I play as in Red Flood, play as a Vietnam or Vietnamese and make the Coconut Empire? I've never heard of that, but we'll take a look at it eventually. We'll definitely take a look at it. Wow, Japanese military restrictions. The Dai Viet Quoc Don Dang. Actually, I'm kind of interested in, you know, with actually looking at this these national spirits. I'm actually really interested in oh, the Viet Cong, interested in seeing what a ja Japanese, a Vietnamese focus tree would look like in TNO. This actually looks really, really cool. And let's see, change my army template. Well, someone asked I should change my tar army template to make sure it's better. Well, we can't because because of our national spirit, small army, we lose attack and defense. We cannot train, disband, or edit unit templates without permission from our Japanese overlords. And Japan said no. So as much as I'd love to, if I could have already changed your template, I would have already done so. But we are literally not allowed to, so that's why we're struggling quite a bit. Even though this template's not too bad, especially with armor on, that's not too bad, but it is what it is as we're trying to get more liquid reserves. Because, you know, we're looking pretty good there. We got enough PP for now. The Japanese file does not like us, They're, they have very little influence. The old guard doesn't like us, and they have a good amount of influence. And the reformist faction has the majority of influence, or at least the most influence out of everyone here. So we've really pissed off people and really made some people happy. Go figure. But we have a war to win. And hopefully we can win it in this episode. The battle for Italy, cool. That's very nice. No one cares right now. And now we have a lot of spare divisions to use. And these guys are still taking a lot of attrition, hopefully, some places. Let's hope so. Because they can't make any divisions that fast. So, that's why I want to use these guys to help kind of poke into the enemy as much as possible. Because these are the three divisions that have the APCs on them. So hopefully they are a little bit stronger than at least our enemies. So, Alright, anything else here? Not too bad. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing not too bad myself. So... And, oh, weapon improvement. Nice. Get, uh, become more offensive, please. That'll give us more attack, which is nice. And that's a little bit ahead of time. Anti-tank won't really matter too much. Marines, that's a nice. We have, we're using recon anyway, so we must use recon, right? Any attack we do, they cannot replenish their defenses with. Or their soldiers with. We're out of anti-tank. We're out of infantry equipment, so this is pretty darn bad. But I do not want to rely on Japanese help, but we're purging the committee, which is very nice. Followed up with the first real test, which I believe I read yesterday, so if you'd like to read about this one again, please go right ahead. But now, oh, we actually have a positive amount of stability, go figure. That is very, very nice. And if we can break through here, I'm going to cut over here and then cut these guys off if we possibly can. Send half you guys over here too. That'd be really good. Oh, nice. And I think we have broken them. So from my understanding, if you play as the National Protection Army, you really, 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 really need to, uh, um... Make sure you attack as fast as possible and you're not too devastated, but at least that's what I've heard. I, I have looked into the guide and or into a guide looking how to play this, so we'll see. We'll definitely see. I'd love to get more GDP growth, but I'm going to save our PP just for a little bit. I don't mind inviting Japanese companies, though. Hmm. Resource shipments. Resource shipments would not be bad either. You bet, get better consumer goods. We're already at tw one and a half, almost, so that's not too bad. And our GDP growth is better than our actual stuff. Oh, we have one more. Oh, crap. We do have one more to go over. Kunming? Oh, wait. The general surrender. Is that it? Gao had hardly slept in weeks. It seemed like the bad news never stopped coming. 15,000 men dead there. Three planes MIA in western Yunnan here. 
dissenters at home against war even when it meant total annihilation. Long Yun's massacres in any tiny patch of land he conquered. They had made progress, yes, but it was progress sustained by too much blood and death. Finally, intelligence had reported something truly tangible and good for China. It had not been confirmed, but it seemed to be true. The devil was dead. Long Yun had been shot, the madman killed by his own tired, frightened generals. That is not to say that the commanders were perfectly sane and reasonable, but they weren't at least on a march for blood throughout the entirety of China. Duan Ji Wen, one of the leaders in the new shaky government, personally sent a messenger across the battle lines to sue for unconditional surrender. Who would pass up an opportunity like this? I would! I want to go back to war! Peace at last! After such a horrible war of brothers, he signed in, he sighed in relief and resolved to take one of his first walks in a long time after all. Nanjing was a beautiful city, especially this time of the year. The war's over? Okay, 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 okay. I was wondering, like, okay, they pieced us out, which I didn't like, but I, I prefer this like this, okay. I was hoping that we'd at least get the territories. We don't have them as core places, which is really bad for us, but victory in the Western Insurrection. For the first time, after mornings of gory charges, afternoons of lead rain, and nights of artillery guesswork, the guns have finally fallen silent. The silence is everywhere in the Yuan. Legislators hold their collective breath and frantically read reports. In the streets, the people shush each other and turn their ears towards radios. On the front, soldiers hold their guns almost as gently as they sob. The realization, a possibility almost too alien to comprehend, fails or falls to the center stage of thoughts of the war is over. The silent breaks, we've won, China has won. The cry begins in the Yuan, sparking a fire that spreads to the streets and cities, which doesn't stop till the remotest villages are aflame. The chain tears as soldiers break free, unleash torrents almost great enough to put out the flames, so many die, but the war is over. The bureaucrats set to work. They would wail and weep in their own time, for now they labor transforming victory into something more legally tangible. Simply like the Jinan province, Japan couldn't say no, the Chinese had won the rising sun's respect and perhaps fear. And so China is victorious. Jinan will be placed under Chinese administration. Everyone in China breathes a sigh of relief. They can rest for today, but tomorrow the struggle continues. And we remove Western insurrection, which is where? Well, we won a lot faster than I thought we would. I wanted to go all the way up there and kill everybody. But don't tell that to the... The FBI? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, lose surrender. I don't know. Maybe we lose that. So, all these people Guangxi, Shangxi, Sichuan, and others removes puppet from Guangxi. Becomes our puppet. For the victory over the Mad Dog of the Southeast, order in East Asia will be restored. Our expanded military freedoms will be restricted again while we regain control over provincial governors. I'll right, see what happens. Beautiful. Now, we're still in the Code Prosperity here, but look at this. We actually have our Chinese puppets back. back. Oh, I should have not clicked on that. I should not have clicked on that. No! It's gonna go away. Is it... Is it gonna go... Wait, hold on. Ooh, do we really want to lose war support? I really don't want to lose war support, but... Eh, we'll get the army XP because we can. Let's just grab it anyways because we can. We still can't edit any of this stuff, which is god-awful, but whatever. Hey, but we're at peace, my friends. We are at peace. We've won the war. China, not completely irrelevant. So we'll do this one. We can hurt ourselves a little bit more, but that's fine for now. That's super good to get. 20 and what? Was it like 50? Seven? Okay, well, I actually went down. That's not good. <laughs> Alright, I think I read, what was it, this one yesterday? The, the Shang, Oil of Shang Li? If you want to read about that, please go right ahead, but we're going to get more oil. Because right now, I want us to focus on getting down new civilian factors, get even more civvies for now, which would be good. And then, the walkie-talkie. Oh! Baratia unifies the Far East. <gasps> Can idealism survive in these dark times? I don't know, but I do have a cup of coffee here at the State of the Army. In the streets of Nanjing, in the sessions is yawn. War run, fever runs rampant. Propaganda at a comfortable distance from the front lines. He did, had heated patriotic sentiment to a boil. Everyone, at least on the radio, has faith in the Republic and President Gao Zongwu, and most of all in the Grand Chinese Army, only, second only to the IJA, goes a slogan. In the minds of those far from the war, Long Yun is already defeated. And he is. The truth, on the other hand, is far more ugly. Most Chinese soldiers are under-equipped in both arms and knowledge. Officers prefer to waste wages of fictional men in broth brothels than train their troops. Makes sense. Journals spend more time planning parties and strategies. Every night, disgruntled conscripts fed up with poor paying conditions qu leave quietly to try their luck under the leadership of Long Yun. On the battlefield, the ferocity of the enemy ba terrifies farm boys. The training dummies never charge like that. The military may as well hand over the guns to the enemy and politely lend them up to be shot. If this war is to be won, the army must resolve it. Oh, that's not good. Oh, God. Okay, so we just hurt ourselves here then. Well, apparently you're not supposed to complete that focus after you won the war. I didn't realize that that's going to hurt us that badly. Wow, minus 25% attack and defense. Hopefully we don't go to war for the rest of this campaign. That would really suck. Wow, that really sucks. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do? Energy for the sphere. Turns out Ru Japan wouldn't let us enjoy our oil and rubber in peace. We should have predicted this, but not all hope is lost. We can levy some advant advantageous prices for these exports, offer some additional bonuses, and we'll gain even more influence within the sphere while also weakening Japan's grip. To get more consumer goods, which is exactly what we want, more synthetic oil and resource efficiency gain. While we have to consider rubber and oil to Japan, let's be 
recompensated somewhat. Oh, the IRA stands down, huh? At least we get more money, too. That would be nice, too. Money's nice, right? Money's always nice. We never have... We None of us probably ever have enough money. Oh, terrible, I know. Cool. Basic motorized is almost done. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. What else we got around here? Can we cut down the bribes in here? Probably not. Oh, Black Gold and Shangli. The recently discovered Shangli oil field just west of Japan, or Japanese Shandong, presents itself as a risky yet tantalizing endeavor. The greatest shortage faced within the sphere is the shortage of oil prior to the Pacific War. Uh, both China and Japan received hefty oil imports from the U.S. Following deteriorating relations with the U.S. in the post-war period, Japan and at large China have faced acute oil shortages. If we can access this oil field and exploit it, we would have access to one of the largest oil supplies in the sphere. Excellent. I do want to do this. I want to get more GDP growth, but... A decreased Japanese file of faction opinion of us. We do hurt our consumer goods as well. We have 37% stability, which is not too bad. Um, I'd, I'd honestly probably do this one up, up north of us. We've got to keep some PV as well for the next innovation gain stuff. Invest in Chinese companies. This is basically the same thing, but there's a 20% chance to get one civvy, or 10% chance to get two civvies and a milli, and you get more GDP growth, or G just GDP, but... Uh, gain additional expenses. GDP growth does go up, which is really nice. So stamp out no. Wait, wasn't there more stuff here? Hmm. Actually, how much? 48%. Negative influence. These guys don't care. So, uh, towers in the distance. Each day the villagers would wander out early in the morning and watch the massive steel towers in the distance churn out a deep black smoke. Each day in the village, the ground would shake with the intensity of an earthquake. Some of the older men on the verge of senility prostrated to the ground praying for the gods to have mercy. Surprisingly, it was the children who understood what was happening. The West, the land of oil and blood, was bringing its innovations to China. And they're coming quickly and unrelentingly. When early Saturday morning, the thumping stopped. There was always an unusual quiet and the towers paused for a moment, swaying ever so slightly in the wind. Finally, they began to belch the blackest smoke of any of the villagers had ever seen. Like a squid's ink, Shangli's oil was striking. Soon, even the peasant will live a comfortable cosmopolitan life and new civilian factories. Our program of industrialization must not be limited to our military development. It must serve our civilian population as well. Our gathered expertise, experience, and resources should help us end this ship should help us to this end. So that'll be good. And actually how much influence do these guys have? They almost have none. I don't mind maybe doing this a little bit more then. Give me the uh, influence by ten. Oh do we get one oh cut down on corruption, yeah that'd be good. We don't get nearly as much political power, but that helps our construction speed and stuff like that, so it's not too bad. Over here construction speed would be nice. GDP growth increases by 0.1%. Oh, actually. Hmm. There's a 25, 25, 75% chance if you do this one, you get more growth. For this one, you get consumer goods. I'm going to do that one once. So now we're 48, 47, 24. Not bad. These guys don't like us too much, but we got better here, so it doesn't really matter too much. So now we're 20 and 14. It could be a lot worse, actually. So since we're doing quite well, I'm going to keep maybe boosting this up. You can cut that. Actually, we can cut that now since we're not at war anymore. That's not too bad. Are you guys starving for anything? Are you guys getting hit by resistance rebels and such? Maybe not. That's okay. Just kind of hang out here. But I'm glad we got our old puppets, Chinese puppets back. That's really nice. The grid. The noble Chinese peasant still lives a pri primeval, primeval, blah, 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 primeval life. I, my apologies for my mispronunciation here, guys. That wouldn't be out of place in the old days of the warlord era or even the Qing dynasty. If he does have any limited power or running water, it is entirely locally sourced, often leading to inconvenient arrangements or a lack of arrangements. And so the Chinese peasant lives without a light to read or water to bathe, ironically. This regionalist energy infrastructure means we power all our oil wells and refineries with kerosene. Across the LLC, each Japanese citizen lives with power coursing through his home. Their energy grid, a nationally standardized system, produces energy that may be used on the other side of the empire. Great power lines fly along the shoulders of great country roads. The less lofty goal, once unthinkable, may now be attainable. By connecting regionalized energy infrastructure, we can re replicate Japan's achievements and give every man in China light. Set the lamps alight. Alight. Yes. Industry. Um, hmm. Let's do that one first. Robots in China? Yes, please. So we did that stuff up here. We already climbed down on the other stuff, so we got a lot of things going on, so... Uh, 88%. Shocking! The coal mine to the northwest was a point at one... A serious burden to transport. It generated great amounts of electricity, but could only service the immediate area, so we would have to transport coal to separate facilities. This no longer is the case with the successful opening of our first long-distance power line. The line transfers electricity produced in the Nanchang flows on lines to power the factories in China. Changsha, eliminating the need for coal imports and freeing up precious railroad space and power to the people. Nice. We're getting pretty far with the um, technolo technological self-sufficiency. And so without doing that, we're only at minus 2.77 billion, which is still not too bad. 
still not too bad at all. So I just gotta make sure we get more PP, and which we can really get not very much. <laughs> oh man, that's not very much. Oh man. At three, we need six for this one too, so. How's poverty doing? Next month, we're gonna get basic mechanization done and upgraded. And soon enough, we will have poverty even better, so. So after this one, hardworking people, I'd love to do that. Um, center production, I would love to get rid of the poverty problems we have here. Oh, yeah. That's actually not too bad. Oh, you know what? We're going well with everything else here. Let's do ramp up military production. Our armament project is proving successful beyond our wildest dreams. We must continue tapping into this market space for the benefit of us and this fear. The wants of the people. As we modernize our industry, it is easy to perhaps forget the most important resource in industrialization, the common worker. The common worker spends 8 to 12 hours a day working, gets paid, has a home, a family, and a president has nothing to provide them without anything extra. This uncomfortable and sad reality pushes a solution. Build urban factories that produce goods exclusively for civilian consumption. Though not explicitly viable for providing a family with the opportunity to buy toiletries and uh, clothing improves the quality of life and improves the worker's ability to work, let's get investing. Pour a few dollars in. It's just a few dollarinos. We got it. We can afford it. Oh, what do we have down here? Towards construction. Further industrial expansion. Oh, you, you're guaranteed a civvy. Okay, that's not too bad. How much is that? Is that duck in the window? So much has been lost in the wars between the Japanese invasion to the present day. Not only people, but experiences, opportunities lost forever, robbed by power-hungry politicians. No more is that more apparent than in the dilapidated remains of the toy factory. Oh, if you'd like to read about better agricultural methods, please go ahead. Than the toy factory in Nanjing. Long ago, the factory would churn out children's playthings, puzzles, dolls, and flagship products, and the wooden duck. The factory was repurposed once the war came. The building that brought fantasy and fun to life was twisted into something dark, a munitions plant, a tool for murder. The war is over, though, and it's high time that joy returns to China. The government has financed a refurbishment of the factory. Everything comes back to the modernization. A bulk a modern nation is not a miserable nation. Happy children, happy nation. With mass mechanization, beautiful. Get a free civvy. That's so good. Yes. Mass mechanization. We are close to getting modern agriculture. Oh, this is good. This is good. How, how many civvies we got? Almost roughly two. two oh, roughly two full lines. Oh, that's so good. So good. Makes me happy. And we could go over there. I'm going to wait still. Resource extraction gain. Would that really mean anything? Actually, it would. we get more steel, which would be very nice to get. Let's do that one now. And then, new production tools. Equipment. Poverty over people will be reduced over time. Immigration laws will be loosened. And our penal system will become harsher. GDP receives the fruits. And poverty rate over people will be reduced over time. Our growing reputation as co-prosperity spheres arsenal is not simple work. We will require more volunteer workers. Perhaps we should incentivize volunteers to step forward. We can always use more hands. And I apologize. Like apparently, I'm reading like I've noticed about myself. Um, my eyes are like reading something that I'm not conscious of, and then I say it even though it's in like the next line down. So my apologies for sometimes re reading things incorrectly and reading words ahead of time. But we need to do that one too. Further and further, what we have is not enough. The rifles that come off our lines are good, but they're simply not enough. The planes can maneuver very well, but they're not enough. As long as a Chinese soldier wields even a Japanese canteen, we will not produce enough. We face the issue of quantity and need to fix our shortage as soon as possible. We shall remedy this, quite ingeniously might I add, by lengthening work hours, opening more production hubs, and introducing quotas to the factories. If our math is correct, and it usually is, we should see production quotas increase near exponentially. Exponentially. So let's not do a focus yet, I want to get this one done first, and advances in technology. And we gotta do that one next, but now we go ahead and do this one, attract new workers. Attract workers. I like attractive workers. But anyways, our efforts are born fruit. Do we want more construction? Production. Well, we're going to need a lot for production here just because we, I, the industry thing was kind of weird. But new production tools. A modern industry fit for the modern age demands modern production techniques and tools. The old tools may have served us well, but sometimes you just have to let, learn to let go. What we shall gain far outweighs the loss. And our GDP will receive a small boost and our industrial equipment will be increased. Because I want to go faster industrialization. That looks really good. You get two military factories, which I don't really care about. But you get more industrial expertise and equipment, which is good. Uh, both will improve a little bit more quickly over time. Invest in industrial technology. Poverty gets better. With the rampant industrialization of our nation, or economy, the poverty of our people will be reduced over time. And debt goes up, but when does debt not go up, so... We could really use more PP, though. Wow. Hey, a GP growth is 4.4%, not bad. We can do it once. Do it, do it once. We don't have the PP for it anyways, even for liquid reserves, but more workers. Our system of building factories, well, liberals, uh, campuses have worked out so far so well. But even now, it is not enough. 
The workers spent almost all their time living on the campus, working long hours and returning back to their bunkers to sleep. But this is not enough. We need even more workers to make even more guns. So another scheme has been devised. Conscript the prisoners through work contracts in exchange for short sentences. The whip cracks with love. Oh, we love cracking and whipping here. Hmm. More workers to work less? Diary entry 498. I've been in Wuhan for many months now. It is a truly despicable place. The promised accommodations are glorified huts. The food is rare, and the pay is in vouchers I can redeem directly for goods. I spent all my Saturday waiting in line to use my vouchers when I bought an oil lamp. If I go back in five months, I can get some oil. Some talk about going on strike, but I'm afraid that because I'm a prisoner, I will be treated especially cruel. Then again, there can't be anything worse than this. Love, Jun Hong. Jun was very hung. Mm, I want to wait, because it's not mandatory yet for us to do that. Because we're still building a whole bunch of civvies anyway, so... After this, faster industrialization, which I really, really want. Faster onwards, ever onwards. Thousands upon thousands are signing up for ever-growing industrial program. The economic indicators are growing and show no sign of stopping. We must continue our industrialization program at all costs. Center production will be not too bad. Ooh, let's keep spending more for now, just because we want to build faster, get more consumer goods to use, as well as get more PP, so not bad. Get that GDP growth going up. I, China is always an interesting nation to play as in Hearts of Iron 4. Almost always. The need for tools. If nothing else, the previous 15 years have brought peace to China. China had only known fighting both internal and external, and ironically, only through defeat could China finally grow. It is by no means a favorable relationship, but our ties with the Japanese have allowed access to the, their stockpile of second-hand industrial tooling. These poorly maintained antiques have worked us up for now, or worked for us until now, but if we wish to truly industri industrialize, we will need a more substantial supply base re recently. An envoy from Tokyo has delivered an offer. A certain Zaibatsu is willing to sign an exclusive contract with the government for the production of heavy industrial equipment in exchange for the favorable resource rights in one of our northern provinces. Not only with this deal provide us with much needed equipment, and also employ many of our citizens and encourage much needed prosperity amongst the peasantry. Though at the risk of concession to Japan, we must try it lightly. Is this our chance now? Maybe. We definitely gotta come back down here too though. Like, this is not really good. Even though, I mean, this stuff is okay. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I like innovation and stuff, but this stuff, industrialization seems better. Technology is cool and all, but there's a lot of blueprints. I don't know. Research facilities would be better, but we need to do education, and... Uh, screw it, just start heading on over here, that's fine. Just start it anyways. Oh, another one done. Successful business venture. Though the deal seemed more coercive than legally or legitimately beneficial, we are surprised to see that quality products are making their way off the Zaibatsu factory floor. Chinese domestic plant number one is a hastily converted primary school campus that has finally bore fruit in the form of heavy tractor machinery and load-bearing transports. The factory itself is run with an entirely Japanese management staff and employs a Japanese security force to ensure production quotas are met. The working environment is cutthroat, harshly critical, and unforgiving of error, meaning production is quick and of good quality. Though the job is taxing on the workers, many peasants are glad to have a stable income. With the success of this plant, we now possess the capability to sow the seeds of Chinese industry. This is the art of the deal. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Excavation post. A hard-working people. I want to improve poverty so much. I'll probably do this one last, honestly. I'll probably do that last. Educating the poor. That can be pretty good to do. We must not restrict education to that of the rural, urban, and aristocrats, for it would be idealistically stupid to assert that we are a nation of feudal lords and bourgeois. In order to give opportunity to the poor to contribute to society, we must offer to them full access to our state education program, not only for the ability to grant economic fairness and of opportunity, but also create a more educated populace, which is super important. God dang, we have no PP. We really have just no PP. Oh, but we need that one too. I like this one, but maybe go over here and get more PP first. China has some of the most diverse artistic tradition in the world. From intricately varnished furniture to paintings of western countryside, beauty of all shapes and sizes can be found in the workshops of the Middle Kingdom. It is imperative that we teach the art history and tradition of China in order to inspire pride in our students. More importantly, we must carry forward the great Chinese artistic traditions into a new modern era. Beyond China, of course, there is a beautiful art. By teaching the history of European, African, and American art, we can create new fusions of and work towards the great pinnacles of beauty. Free the fields. If we ever wish to compete with the Japanese, we need to speed up our industrialization. Our republic's primary roadblock to the industrialization have been a lack of access to modern production machinery and limited access to a skilled workforce. The Japanese have offered us a mission of industrial advisors to oversee our transition, however. These agreements also include many caveats that would turn into China into a Zaibatsu playground. It has been theorized by one of our economic ministers that if we can successfully mechanize our agrarian industry, it would be possible to transfer semi-skilled laborers from rural farms into urban factories. Our fledging urban industries in dire need of qualified working people and by offering incentives to those recently jobless farmers, it's quite accessible to us. 
We will, of course, have to subsidize the acquisition of mechanized farming equipment from, for these farmers, but what are a few tractors in the name of a national progress? Wagons East, and we're going to grab... Not that one yet, because we need to teach history. But first, Great Tumble Backwards. But reports have come in regarding our recent efforts to mechanize a rural field, and it would appear that we have fallen short of our goals. The tractors we sold to farmers at a discounted rate were not performing to the standard that we promised, usually due to operator error. Many farmers have had no knowledge of mechanical workings, and a few believe that water is a viable substitute for gasoline. Along with the tractors, we also sold the idea that farmers could downsize on hands and still increase profits, which lead to many farm owners preempt preemptively firing hands. When reports reach us from one from the onset of regional crop failure, we had no choice but to turn back the recent urban migrants or immigrants to avoid a widespread famine. With workers returning to their plow, famine seems unlikely, but we remain without skilled workmen in our urban factories, at least for now. I guess we'll put an ad in the paper. Man, China is a mess. But we will reform the curriculum to begin teaching history to the best of our ability. Not only of the evolution of the Eastern world, but that of Europe and the United States, so that we may have a populace that is able to assess the situations that we will be faced with, and be able to provide a nuanced solution. Learning about nuance is always important. Because we have to do this one next. Oh, there it goes, those guys. Goodbye. A field trip in Tsinghua. Now, I want you to take a closer look on the weave of this. The students pushed into each other, taking frantic notes and sketches. There was no cushion. Instead, there was a mat of tightly woven fibers so fine as to evade the human eye. Above the fibers on the headrest was a varnished relief of Chinese life. A maid carried a vase to the well. A bureaucrat strolled through town, his eyes agape with laughter. It was a beautiful work of art. Could anyone guess appear that this seat was produced in? In a moment, a student raised her hand. Yes? Well, judging by the weave on the fiber, I'd say it's Li Qing. In fact, you might be surprised to know that this dates back far, far earlier. Early Ming. The students gasped. Perhaps pre-Manchu artistic tradition was far more advanced than they had thought. Look at those mountains. Just amazing. Look at all the stuff we can do here. Oh, wow. We don't have the peepee for it, though. Remove a billion from liquid reserves. Whoa. The pro-Japanese faction will get 0.1 influence. The performance faction gets, loses 0.05. You get a military factory and you lose 10% consumer goods. Is that worth it? Probably not. Man, this GDP, uh, or the interest on the GDP is just skyrocketing. Oh, baby. Hey, 4.9% though. That's not too bad. Go. Oh, we got some anti-tank here too. And we can do that one too. Awesome. And we just... PP. PP needs... Mmm. Uh, don't you hate it when you need more PP? Performance in the cabinet. Clamp down on the corruption. Yeah, both of those are really killing us right now. Uh... High taxes are not great. Corvis. Oh, we have Corvis slavery? I guess that makes sense. We have no healthcare, too. Reluctant conscripts. Makes sense. Teach history. The history of the Oriental world is, is a lengthy, epic, and teaches lessons all can follow, however. We need to also teach the evolution of Europe and the turmoils of the U.S., allowing our populace to assess all situations that we will be faced with and be able to provide inspired solutions echoing the great figures of the world prior to the present. Let's pray we aren't doomed to repeat it. We probably are, though. And Chinese scholarship? It's not bad. Teaches sciences, research speed. Con yeah, let's do math next. But this one gives you more construction speed and resource extraction, so educating the poor. If you want to read this one again, please go right ahead. But yeah, this would be really good to get next. We definitely got to do this one next. What is this? Increase industrial R&D funding? Wow. 50% chance of improving... In Our industrial expertise will permanently improve a tiny bit more quickly over time. Yeah. With China, you just need so much PP. It's not even funny. You need so much PP. And that 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 debt is hurting me. Like I'm screaming inside because of how bad the debt looks right now. But once we get this done, we should have plenty of money to go around. But evolution of culture. Actually, let's not do that one yet. There you go. Because if we then we can do this one. And what do we want to do? Research speed. Uh, we could use more. That's almost not any more PP. That's really almost not any more PP. So if we get point one point five eight. How's the construction going? Oh, look at that. 20 and 20 and then 3. Not bad, my friends. Look at that. We've got a lot of growth. So I'm going to go with this one. So this is go... Well, it wasn't quite 0 .03, but close enough. Evolution of culture. The fundamental base of all humanities, whether art or history, is culture as such. The evolution of culture has become the most crucial aspect of modern Chinese education. Covering the development of artistic style, sociological intersection and diffusion, and the complex zeitgeist of both the Orient and Occident, this new curriculum will rebirth or birth in academia uh, unparalleled by any other. A new age of arts is upon us. Historia est vitae magist magistra. Cool! 
A look into the cities. The governors of Nanjing, Beijing, and Shanghai have been requesting ever since the implementation of the five modernizations that we expand educational opportunities for the poor in their cities. For the good of the cities and for the good of China, we will include programs for those born into poverty, ensuring that they have the same public education as everyone else. Poverty isn't the only barrier, however. The governors of these cities have requested that both men and women have access to the program. The demand for Chinese workers has pulled mothers and fathers out from their households keep them employed. They need to be set up to date with the latest technology innovations. To achieve all these, they'll need constant education. Poverty's chains will be broken, and we're currently actually doing teeth mathematics. Over here, because we want more construction speed. Our next reform will be in the curriculum of mathematics, a subject integral to, the f to facilitate growth within the more specialized fields of education. We will reform the curriculum to produce better learned administrators, bureaucrats, engineers, etc. for the good of the state and the sciences. And then we'll finally, finally, finally do new excavation equipment after we're done with this part of the industry. Yes, please. Very bueno. How can we expect to catch up if our mining tools are the same ones used back in the days of the Qing? We must intensify our efforts to acquire new and, s new and modern mining equipment to properly harness the Earth's vast resources. Teach math. We've reformed the mathematics curriculum now with an enhanced emphasis on growth and specialization. Teachers are now given more updated courses, and now use techniques to ensure everyone is able to understand the fundamentals. We're sure to produce administrators, bureaucrats, engineers, and many others that will serve the state and the sciences quite excellent excellently. How can anyone remember anything past algebra? I honestly cannot. Except a little bit of trigonometry, but not really. Digging deep. The earth holds many resources and store for those who are willing to dig down. We know that for a fact that our lands hold vast resource deposits and there must be more deposits hidden below. So dig, 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 dig infinitely for the country. Requires significant costs to maintain, a cost which we can reduce with the profits we gain from mining and selling mineral resources. And excavation efficiency will increase. So right now we're improving research capabilities. Uh, we have... That's actually not too bad. The Chinese education stats, we actually get more political power because it's improving quite a bit more. That's actually really nice. Construction speed went up. Let the Wan faction effects, not great, but not bad. I like the construction speed. Manning the factories, not bad either. Energy for the sphere could be a lot worse. Gaining an additional $750 million every year. Sign us up. Out with the old, though. Yes, please. The Chinese state is one of an intense resource production and intense poverty. For years, the Japanese Zaibatsus have stolen our resources in full view of corrupt politicians. Small Chinese resource extractors and contractors are bought up for measly sums and monopolies are maintained with little to no oversight. Well, the resources are there for the taking. Chinese in industries lack the capability to effectively extract these resources and then put them to good use. It is of paramount importance to the process progressing, uh, uh, to the progressing industrialization of China that we begin licensing and purchasing equipment from Japan in order to finally extract these materials that exist in our homeland. We seek Yamato quality. The Japanese are responsible to determine the effectiveness of our future excavation projects. If they say no, so be it. We're still going to do well, no matter what. Let us do well together. And we're at 72%. We're at 46%. Is there anything up here? Uh, encourage domestic consumption. That's not bad. We'll get more GDP growth, but that hurts our consumer goods. Um, this wouldn't be bad either. Get more GDP growth, obviously. Uh, that stuff is all okay. What else do we have down here? So we actually have more options. This one's actually really good. Increase industrial RD funding. So we lose, we'll get better industrial, exper industrial equipment and expertise. And for the duration, industrial expertise and industrial equipment will improve a bit more quickly over time. We remove three quarters of a billion dollars from liquid reserves and get more additional expenses. 20% chance of industrial equipment and society development will begin to improve, as with expertise, and just overall things will just improve. And a 50% chance of a one time 50% research bonus for industry. And I want that permanently, so this one looks really, really good. Even though I do like this one quite a bit as well, because currently. Uh, that's not too bad, but let's, let's, get, let's do this at least once. We have the liquid reserves for for now, so let's at least do this once, because this costs quite a bit. Japanese jackhammers. Today, we're happy to say that the Japanese have accepted our deal for the acquisition of excavation equipment. In all, we purchase enough so that we can begin to train our workers in excavation, but also keep enough in reserve for reverse engineering. If all keeping according to a plan, in, mere years, we'll, in a few mere, mere years, we will have the op operability or capability to produce our own Chinese-made excavation equipment to the future. To the moon. Oh, and let's do this one too. Cool. Artillery. I love already so much. <clears throat> 4.9 billion. Oh, baby boy. And then the copper of Jiangxi. Not bad. Reduce the cost. That's this one. The gold mines of Henan. Gold that makes the world go round. It is a symbol of wealth backing up so many currencies around the world. A modern nation always keeps some gold stockpiled, and if there's money to be made selling it, profits. We have some deposits in Henan that just need proper exploitation to be profitable. Nice. 
We could do that one, but I don't feel like it yet. Yeah, happy 1967, by the way, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Uh, that's so good. 6.25%. Oh, uh, I, oh, there goes whales. So, I can't... Because this is a big jump. 50, 50 to 80%, and then going down to 25 to 50%. That's pretty darn good, and the game is lagging so hard. Oh, boy. Oh, there goes whales. As soon as they went to war, they died. Uh, wait, so with this one, you get 5% more construction speed... 2.5% more research speed. It's just so much better. We have to go deeper, though. The mines are trying to do not slate like burrowing worms, as in other countries. Rather, they chop a hole into a bit of stone and wriggle as much as they can. They will not do... This will not do a new China. Our surface mines and shallow shafts provide nothing but meager deposits. The depths of stone are filled with ancient treasures, hundreds of millions of years old. It is time we take some for ourselves. And to claim our spoils, we must go deep into the broken rocks of the earth. Riches do not come easy. Only a fool believes so. Get digging. And let's get some gold. We have a bunch of gold diggers here. The copper of Zhangji. Copper is showing promise in the burgeoning field of electronics as a conductor. Plus, it has potential as a resource in itself to become a moneymaker for us. Zhangji has a few deposits. We better get to work. And now we're at 59%. And up here, for innovation, we are at 80%. Uh, we actually get a lot more PP now, which is really nice. Oh, commission a geological survey. Look at that. But dig a little harder. It seemed like not even the hard work can strike through these layers upon layers of rock. At our deepest, we've fallen just short of 300 meters, but the problems haven't stopped. Cavens, careless deaths, machine failure, and reckless mining techniques have resulted in weeks of setbacks. We've lost countless pieces of crucial excavation equipment, and we will have to restock if we wish to continue digging deeper. Until then, all we can do is learn. We'll have to try again. This one do. We need more liquid reserves. The historical lack of industrialization has left China with plenty of untapped mineral deposits waiting to be discovered and exploited. We should commission National Geological Surveys to find the location of these deposits. Remove liquid reserves, gain more expenses, you get more a lot more resource efficiency gain, and when removed, if it is successful, a new decision will be unlocked to exploit the surveyed resource deposit. As more deposits are discovered, the chance for an unsuccessful survey will increase. Oh, as we discover more. This will get worse and worse. So probably the first time we do it, we'll do okay. We're actually okay on resource extraction right now. We don't really need that one too much. Let's do this one, though. I want to get even more consumer goods. Look at that. Two and almost a half. That's so good. So tasty. Scrumptious. Mmm. The iron. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm really ignoring this technology stuff here. I'm really, really, really ignoring it. Because education is much more important. Industrialization just helps us up more. Equipment will be increased. But I want to get rid of poverty... Well, we can't get rid of poverty, but we'll do the best we can, obviously. Hmm. Invest in private businesses would not be bad either. I like that GDP growth. So 72% and 88%. Let's save our PP up for increasing technology. So once we hit 5, we'll no longer need to rely on foreign technological assistance. So that'll be really good. The gold of Henan. It is said that money cannot buy happiness. It, if money cannot, surely gold will. Our once proud gold reserves were looted by Japanese vultures, and all that is left now is the drags left by the old KMT government. All hope is not lost yet. Gold still courses through the underbelly of our nation in Henan. Veins can be found nearly commonly, surely worth surely worth out our investment. It would not be easy to dig so deep, but our men are ready and industry capable. No vein will be left untouched, and we will touch it. Oh yes, we will. These guys really like us. Look at the bonuses we get here. But fool's gold. It would appear that our methods of demo demolition are quite effective. However, our scouting could use some work. This particular gold vein that we chose to inaugurate, the mines at Henan, so happened to form in close proximity to a coal mine. So when our prospectors began to blow our shafts, ooh, into the rock, we received a bigger explosion than we expected. We may now have surface access to the gold vein, but at what cost? 62 dead, to be exact. But for China, that doesn't mean anything. The iron? Um, excavation? Slightly improved? Uh... Aluminum. Do we need anything here? We need rubber. <laughs> That's what we need, so it doesn't matter. The iron of Hunan. Iron, one could say it is the bedrock of the modern age. What with its uses as a source of steel. Hunan happens to have some large deposits of the metal, and will be darned if we let it rot under the earth any longer. Absolutely. Cool, we can spend more PP, but... Uh, can we limit them? Ooh, these guys in the cabinet. Stamp out over zealous dudes. No, this one we might do that eventually. Invest in Chinese companies would be really good. And we're at 96%, and we're at 85%. So... In less than three weeks, we'll be able to do this. So let's just save our PP unless there's something really cheap down here. State-owned industries. For three months, you lose consumer goods to get one more civvy. That might be worth it. Yeah, that might be worth it. It's only 25 PP. How much do we get it a day? 0.79. Uh, that costs 25. That means we have 26 left. No, 30, 36. Mm. Uh, 
We remove a lot of liquid reserves which we'll need, so the copper is Yangji. In the days of the dynasties, copper was a versatile, strong, and refined material used for everything from mirrors to coins to swords and wheels. Today, copper is just as essential to the functioning of the state. The copper of China powers the military complex, making the wiring of bombs and lights, all while sending out our messages. In the south, among the mountains and blooming fields of Jiangxi, copper stands waiting to be touched. These deposits, some of the largest in the sphere, are now secured by our companies and ready to be extracted. Eureka! The tin of Da Chang. Tin with its malleability and ductility is an important metal with the deposits that we have in Da Chang and the Yangtze para platform. We can easily exploit and extract it. The Copperhead. Below the surface of the Zhangji Hills lies a massive operation of mine shafts sprawling out in all directions. This is our largest mining operation yet, so so large in fact that we opted to build a series of smelters on site to clear the con congestion in on our railways. It was a combination of inexperienced workers and hasty construction that led to the initial accident when a large bucket of copper sulfide collapsed and flooded the refinery floor. Many workers on the floor had received debilitating burns, some even collapsing into a molten mess and never being seen again. Oh god. Soon the mess would be cleaned by emergency crews, but the damage to our production schedule has been dealt. I fell into the burning ring of fire. Or really, the ring of fire fell into you. Oh, that sounds painful. Let's see, we need more liquid reserves here now. Uh, how's this looking? Not great, but give it some time, we'll be okay. Mm, that's why I don't want to spend too much of our liquid reserves, but we're, we're, we don't need to go all the way down for um, innovation to get it done with, which is actually really awesome. <laughs> that's actually really good. Oh, there we go. Advances in technology. Construction would be nice. I love construction, but there's, when we get to 1970, we're going to need way everything for industrialization. Establish technological self-sufficiency. So we need now a billion in liquid reserves. So, the time has come. Concentrated efforts towards improving our research capabilities has ca catapulted into a position of technological leadership once more. We can finally fully rely on our own research capabilities. Research speed will increase by 5% and remove increase in innovation. Not bad. Oh, oh god. Is Omsk dying? The Iron of Hunan. Nope. Oh, they're doing okay. Cool. Oh, they're doing those guys. Cool. What is a ship without its hull? What is an engine without its cylinders? What is a sword with no blade? They are nothing not without iron. Iron is perhaps the most important resource we must secure for exploitation in large quantities. Our government surveys have found that Hunan holds a variety of resources with iron being the most prominent. If we can establish a mining complex in the area, we will have access to a near limitless supply of iron all under Chinese control. Fire up those furnaces! Burn, burn, burn! Oh yes, look at that. Look at that for uh, uh, civvy goods and such. Spend. Look at the bonuses you get uh, to this. That's why I spend it all the time. More political power, which is great. Resource efficiency gain, better consumer goods, stability wars, more construction speed. Civilian factor spending is bad, but at this point, I, I don't care. Because we're doing so well. A diet cast. The facility of Hunan has grown into a beast of its own. A city tucked within the valley of the hills, sustaining the mine workforce. As one approaches on the main access roads, a faint hum grows into the steady beating of pickaxes and the buzzing of recently employed mechanical drills. This is the environment we've created. A truly vast site estimated to produce millions of tons of iron annually, so impressive that even the site's security has intercepted Japanese gawkers on Sunday strolls, no doubt jealous of the growing Chinese industrial strength. If you must look, then behold. And, uh, we need a billion for this, too. Better research facilities. Great. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually, in which we lose even more PP, but we do get some more research speed, which is uh, a trade-off. Oh, and we need to spend PP here first. As much as I want to do this one, we still need to get more liquid reserves, and we need to get more PP, so that's fine. And then we're almost done with education, too. Awesome. How are our liquid reserves? Not looking great, but that it is what it is. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever it is. Um, that stuff is a little bit ahead of time. Honestly, there's not really much here we can do. I guess we'll do a land auction, I suppose. So, and then aluminum Jinam. Aluminum is an extremely useful metal to own, especially if you want to develop an air force. We happen to own large bauxite or bauxite deposits in our territory, just as it is on the western border at the moment. Bolstering up the guard of the area and funding exploitation will get us far. The Chui Zilong, an expedition to locate natural resources in the upper Shang Shajimao formation, has today uncovered a most Wonderful surprise near the banks of the Tuo River. Members of the team were searching for signs of possible oil deposits, only to be shocked by the discovery of a near-complete set of dinosaur fossils, preserved and protected by the surrounding clay. As a result of the unexpected yet pleasant surprise, the team called in the local Chinese authorities, who in turn contacted a group of paleontologists to excavate and examine the fossils.
After further inspection, the paleontologist concluded that the remains belonged to a new undiscovered species of dinosaur that is a member of the Stegosauria family. This creature, after much speculation, is thought to have likely been alive in the late Jurassic period and its relative, the Stegosaurus, was a large four-legged herbivore. The skeleton is about 7 meters long and 2 meters tall and has two rows of plates along its spine which becomes taller over the hip region and maintain a pear shape. Also, the specimen seemed to have four, or perhaps two, outward facing spikes on the end of its tail in a typical thagomizer pattern that were likely used to fend off predators. A general agreement between the expeditionaries and the paleontologists as to what the name of the discovery will be has been reached. Although some wanted to give it a boring name such as that of the river it was found by, most have said on Chui Zilong, or the Hammer Lizard, as a reference to its power and strength when it roamed these lands, very proud of this product of China. Government officials have ordered the, the dinosaur to be put on display in the nation's capital to show off this wonderful animal to the world. A magnificent creature indeed. And soars like this sounds like we should get more prestige if this was Viking too, but the tin of Da Cheng. As we strive for independence from Japan, we will need a strong military with ample access to domestically produced supply. It is said that an army fights on its stomach, and if we ever wish to confront Japan, we will need to be sure that we are fielding it. Fit. Fielding fit fed and healthy soldiers to reunify China. Sourcing the food is no problem, however, as we put food on the table for most of the co-prosperity sphere. It is storing and preserving the food that has caused us trouble, but one of the technocrats has an idea. Develop the tin deposit near Dachang to produce the tin cans. This is a risky move, but it would be quite rewarding if we can pull it off. Dig deeply and greedily at the cost of plus 0.1 more monthly population militancy. Nice. Still a little bit ahead of time, which is fine. Um... Some basic empties. Type 10 Chi Se tanks? Nice. Yeah, we're still working on this. Keep digging more uh, greedily. And tons of tin. Uh, our prospectors went first, digging. Oh, formation of the Sock Internet. That's cool. Return of the Reds. Digging deeply or with dynamite until we had multiple shafts leading to the deposits. Then the engineers building supports and affixing lights. Soon, miners were chipping away at the tin deposits deep underground. As the mines expand, we introduce more and more machinery demonstrating that Chinese industry is a modern, capable force. Before long, the mine will produce thousands of tons of tin and our foodstuff industry will prosper, cans flying off the shelves and then adapting the resources. The earth has shown its bounty, now it falls upon our shoulders to properly utilize it. The metal reserves we've developed will undoubtedly serve us well. We get a boost to GDP, excavation projects will now be entirely self-sufficient. The resources we gain will improve the efficiency of our factories. The old guard opinion increases, and the faction opinion decay will go down by 10%, which is okay. But really, I wanted a beeline down this way. Poverty will get better. Center production. The sphere relies on us. Made in China. And you know what? If we force them to rely on us too much, then we can really cripple them if we say goodbye to them. So that's something we want to do. The Aluminums of Jinan. We now possess great access to the resources we previously relied on to the Japanese for, and now we can supply our own current military. But it is not enough to be satisfied with status quo. We must look towards the future and develop materials to expand our armed forces. Aluminum built the bombers that dropped the atomic bomb in Hawaii. It builds the friends with Japan's cars, and is the material of the future if we wish to stand independent. The process of refining aluminum is a difficult one and will require new tooling and techniques if we wish to successfully begin production, but innovation has no price. Do not try this at home, and let's do this one too. Um, I like more PP. We're doing quite well with that. I I think we'll probably get more construction speed. Even more construction speed this time. Nice. And actually, do we have any more liquid reserves? We do have a, a little bit more. A little bit more liquid reserves, which is not bad. Uh, this stuff is okay. Um, we're, we're just going to have to wait for this, uh, this one then. We need the PP. We need liquid reserves. Can we cut down the bureaucrats here? No, we cannot. And next up, we will go ahead and do a hardworking people. The effects of manning the factories national spirit will be increased. What is that? Manning the factories. Was it back over here? That's a coordination of the army. Hey, education's better. Not perfect, but getting better. Slave of the Samurai, which we will remove eventually by the end of this campaign. Chinese education status. Factories? Manning the factories. Energy for the sphere. Oh, there it is. Um, that's okay. You get more alpha, which is nice and all. Poverty does get better. Um... Gain two cities and one melee throughout our country. Let's do this one first. A hardworking people. Uh, for efforts to catch up to the world or teaching the people around us anything, that thing would be that we are an ambitious and hardworking people. By cultivating this reputation, we will surely get more investment and more business. This will serve both to prove our worth and to enrich our country. Metals of the future. Aluminum is no simple material like iron or tin. No. Aluminum requires a more deft touch, one with precise machinery and expertise that proved troublesome even for Japanese partners. 
Lan Su Baozite Mine has turned out to be a magnificent success and with a new facility hosting a mine, a refinery and a school to teach technicians for future plants already. Our facility is projected to produce tens of thousands of tons of aluminum, perfect for strengthening our military. Light is wood but strong as steel, adapting our resources. Ah, uh, gotta love this one. And the old guard will like us a little bit more, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's always good to have every faction like you. Doesn't mean you follow through with their ideals, but you know what? That's okay with us. And General Suharto, who is the Indonesian government. Death of Puyi. Ah, uh, so sad. Goodbye, Puyi. And of course, we continue doing with the hard-working people, so. Um, I can't remember if I rec read this one or not. Hmm. If we're ever to catch up to the world or teaching the people around us anything, that thing would be that we are ambitious and hard-working people. Yeah, I've already read this one. By cultivating this reputation, we will surely get more investment and more business. This will serve both to prove our worth and to enrich our country, which is very, very good. Absolutely needed, but adapting resources. Now that we possess access to steady supplies of resources, we can begin to adapt these raw products for industrial needs. We will need to build more urban factories, more railways, and get creative with how everything is going to work together. We have studied the industrial systems of the West and of Japan, but nothing applies perfectly to China in this case. Like everything we've built before now, we want to make something of our own. Industrialization with Chinese characteristics. Ha <laughs> ha, love it. And follow it up with center production. We are shaping up to not only be the granary of East Asia, but the industrial heart of the sphere itself. Well, Japan could concern itself as much as it wishes, for it's inevitable we reclaim our spot as the center of the world. Innocent eyes, mother. What are they doing over there? She tugged on her mother's sleeve, the clangs and bangs of construction and the cotter tension. That's where the factories used to be, remember? Every day those big men would march straight into those buildings and not come out till sunset. Whatever happened to those people? The mother flashed her child a warm smile and nudged her away from the business district. Well, honey, they don't work there anymore. The family that used to own that land got bought out by someone else. But that is none of our business. Despite the doctor's resistance, she continued to push her back on the path to their home. So where do they work now? The mother sighed and looked her child in the eyes, brushing her out of the way. They probably don't have a job right now. Awesome! I'd love it. I'd love it if you never had to go to work. We could stay together all day. Yes, now come along, dear. We must, of course, get home. GP will receive a boost on her national debt will rise, but what else is new? We almost have three full lines. They're so close. So close. Anything else here? Not too much that I want to concern myself with user PP for just yet. We're gonna need way, way, way more liquid resistance. But we're getting there. 4.9% is nothing to laugh at. And also off screen, we did get, was it primary schooling now, I think, or something like that? Or what was it? Research facilities, modern research facilities, so updated research, modern research, mass mechanization, rudimentary factory lines, where's that at? 44 out of 4. Was that one really? Was it really this one academic base that improved? I can't remember. We have reluctant conscripts as well, so a hard working people. Up and down China, the mechanic. The mechanical hums and clanks of industry sound out. In such short time, we have expanded our resource exploitation, bolstered our energy production, all to fuel our militarization campaign. Now Chinese factories produce more arms, more food, planes, and more than ever before. But this is not enough. To ensure long-term prosperity, we must still instill a value of hard work and devotion to progress in a culture. Only China can control her future, supposedly. And then, the sphere lies on us. In the past, Japan's fear relied on us being weak, nothing more than a granary. Now, however, the pr primacy is gradually passing to us as its industrial Nigerian center. No matter which hypotest or hypostas this phenomenon took, one thing is clear. The sphere relies on us to function. Our national efforts are paying off. Let them eat cake. Only China could be so strong as to reform her identity despite the growing pains. In schools, children receive a thorough engineering education despite their interests and form youth labor squads for voluntary factory work. Children are expected to work twice a week for variable hours. This pay labor is unpaid, and despite her claims that such work will invigor personality and working spirit, many students complain about cruel conditions. Some soldiers given factory duty are said to steal from the production lines and sell arms in the black market. We wish to control the working culture of our nation, but it does not come easy. Sometimes force is necessary. Progress hurts sometimes? Yes, it does. Cool. Better decay and more opinion and more opinion and GDP will receive a boost. Uh, man, I wish we had more liquid reserves and stuff. We're forty percent. It doesn't really matter because we just need. We're almost at a billion. We're almost there. We just need way more PP too. Oh boy. Yeah, we just need more PP. Awesome. The sphere relies on us, and we will do made in China. And we have more cap growth and way more factory output. Oh, I love the African devastation. It always happens sixty-seven. Oh, it's almost sixty-eight. Wow. My guilt is that I am still here. This is my guilt. Eh, things happen. The effects of slave of the sam slave of the samurai national spirit will be significantly reduced when you go down there. Nice. Decrease in poverty. If you like it about this, please go right ahead. This is what I've been waiting for the entire time. A toast to our economists. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. But the man in the iron fortress, which we'll read probably next. Uh, actually, no. This one happens every campaign. So if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. 
minus 11 billion, almost a billion every month, roughly a billion. Oh my goodness. 5.2% annual GDP growth, 4% still an industrial system. All across China, we have fostered groups or groupings of powerful industrial communities. Whether they provide resources, arms, electricity, or consumer products, they are all now working with incredible efficiency for the betterment of China. Now just one more issue remains, linking all the industrial com communities into one cohesive system. This, however, should be no problem. All of our industry exists either directly on or adjacent to a tributary of the Yangtze River. Previously, an avenue for Western Imperials to access our interior trade network. It will now serve as an industrial highway until a more robust transportation system is available. The Yangtze will feed us all. And this fear, of course, relies on us. And this does reduce uh, Japan's breadbasket, so hopefully we get better consumer goods, more resources to market maybe, but we'll see what happens. And then, if it doesn't float, fairies sit in queue outside Wuhan Harbor, seeking their chance to slide in and deposit their goods. Some wait for hours, some days. The schedules are for transportation have been packed so tight that when one ship is late, all ships are late. What good are the wooden rifle stocks in Nanjing if they cannot be fitted with the receivers produced in Wuhan? How will Nanchang's aircraft engines take flight if the aluminum airframes from Changsha are three days late? China's stronger, yes, but maybe she'll benefit from spurring out delivery times. Still, China is proud. Made in China. China's taking up the mantle of the workshop of the world. Not just a sphere. Domestic products have been overtaken with Chinese goods. The label made in China eclipses any other, and we have successfully transformed our outdated production methods into one envied the world around. So long as there's demand and money to be made, the workshop of the world will continue to turn on goods. Which is great. Great, great, great. Arsenal of the Co-Prosperity Spirit made in China. We love being stuff made in China. Maybe not in our timeline, but maybe we do. We probably do. Beautiful. Absolutely wondrous. Almost... Minus 12 billion. That's really good. One, two, three. We actually have three full lines now, plus one. So, th plus like 3.3 like three or something. 3.2, whatever it is. Doesn't matter to me, but the burden of success. A decade ago, China was called the breadbasket of the sphere. To the Japanese, our agrarian economy was of particular loose, and they remained consistent customers to our millet and rice exports. Even then, our production was such that the Japanese men in Hawaii ate their bento over Chinese-grown rice, much of the same as the Japanese youth growing up on Chinese rice in the porridge. The Japanese would eat our beef, drink our tea, crack our eggs, and slice our bread. Or slice our bread. We have long control of the sack, it is what made us useful to the Japanese, but now we are forging our own sword. Pickaxes now made in China crack against iron. Furnaces smelt the iron. Technicians turn it to steel. And ferrymen ship tons of the metal out to factories. The lights never go down out now, as coal and oil burn to keep the night alive. It is easy, even affordable, for a peasant to turn the lights on at night and teach themselves to read after a long day's worth of work. Factories turn resources into products useful for China's efforts at an incredible rate. Workers from all around the world, or country at least, stay in dormitories and work day in and out for national progress. Soldiers not can shoot Chinese guns, ride Chinese bikes, and travel on Chinese buses. What is even more amazing still is the fact that this entire process can now be can now occur without a word of Japanese sp spoken. In this sense, we are becoming free. Oh no! Now that we hold the Japanese in a precarious situation, their food is Chinese, and soon the appliances will be too. The Japanese government in Shanghai or Shanghai is taking protectionist measures, limiting Chinese industrial export traffic, and keeping a closer eye on how much we're actually exporting. This is no issue, however, simply the burden of success to China stronger than ever, and now establishing technological self-sufficiency. Beautiful. We've done it. We've absolutely done it. That is good. We can finally fully rely on our own research capabilities. After that, we will continue with... I want to keep going down in education, because this stuff can... Oh, actually, getting another research slot would be really good. we get another one down there, too, actually. We don't get a research slot from this. So, as much as I want to get a research slot from here, we're already down here, so we might as well go down this way. So, future is now. This stuff is okay, and that stuff is okay. Yeah, we're going to do this stuff last. I'll be honest, we'll do that stuff last. Teach the sciences. Chemistry, biology, and physics are all important to continue development and innovation for the good of all China. We will begin adding the sciences as part of the curriculum so that we may be at the cutting edge of research. Great. 0.75, not too bad. There you go. 1.29 billion. You know what? Let's cut it down a little bit. We can afford it. Basic tanks? Nice. Happy 68, everyone. I hope you're having a great year. Type 63 rifles? Very cool. Actually, are we making tanks? Oh, we are. China is becoming, like Russia, a more of a more modern state. What's actually going on in Russia right now? Far East. Oh, you guys split up. That sucks for you guys. And Samara's going to unify this area, too. All right. Well, whatever. That's fine with us. As long as we don't have to fight them for now. So, clamp down on corruption. Um, we'll probably do that one. Actually, they don't care. 50% so 27 influence. That doesn't equal 100, huh? All right. Clamp down on corruption. Cool. Output, but I don't really care about output. 
almost minus 12 billion. One, two, three, almost three and a half. We're so close. We're so close. Teach the sciences. Get more research speed would be great. Improved state of education. Oh, and a little bit of lag, maybe? Made in China. A boy rides his bike down the beaten, muddy trails of Luzon. It is not a new bike, but it works. He received it for his birthday. He is happy. Underneath the seat, Made in China is pressed into the steel. The village watch uh, nurses a beer as he looks out into the jungles of Borneo. In his lap, he cradles a hunting rifle. He likes it because it is reliable and hardly misses. Carved in the stock is Made in China. In the Tokyo Miss Mitsukoshi, an impatient husband waits for his wife to decide on a new rice cooker. She is torn between the two, one red and one blue. She does not want to buy something that will break after a few months' usage. It does not matter which one she chooses, as both are stamped Made in China. A conductor of the Thai Burma Link Railway smokes a cigarette as he watches the engine de dials. The boiler could use a bit more heat, so he signals the engineer to shovel more coal in. The shovel, the coal, and the engine were all made in China. Let it be known, everything is made in China. Cap and resources? Educational progress will be increased by 20%. China scholarship? Um, we could do that. Yeah, we have one, two, and then one, two, three. Actually, let's do this one first, actually, just because... Causing 2% of our current GDP, that's going to be a lot of expenses, so I'd rather get it now before we do it later when our GDP is higher, so it costs us even more in the future. While well-intentioned, we cannot raise an educated populace or population with intentions alone. To better use our educational program, we have to increase its funding as to as, so as to afford better textbooks, better facilities, and of course, more. Not bad. Anything else here? Uh, we don't have that much more PP, but let's save the PP because we're getting quite a bit closer for this stuff here. Oh, and we're almost done. With this up. Oh, Salazar is gone. Goodbye, Salazar. Oh, we can do stuff here. Establish Wuhan Military Industrial Complex. Oh, that's not bad. We don't really need that, though. I'd rather do this one. This one's really good. Teach the sciences, though. The sciences, chem uh, chemistry, biology, and physics, previously neglected, have been thoroughly integrated into every level of education. Young children now perform rudimentary experiments in classrooms and are set to work creating CO2 bubbles, measuring the speed of fail falling marbles, dissecting frogs, and most importantly, becoming infected with the desire to know. These young minds, inundated with science, will be the vanguard of China's future. Knowledge grows from the mouth of a test tube and will finish off with scholarships for the poor. So many young people of unfortunate backgrounds are blessed with intellect, but end up being unable to fructify fructify if properly due to lack of access to our country's higher learning institutions. By instituting a scholarship program for our poor, we will make sure these souls can develop their intellect more and bolster their loyalty to us as a bonus. Great! But I, this episode so far, I would say, out of this entire campaign at this, by this point, has been ex very, very good. We have our own, was it, innovation? We, we're self-sufficient with that. Next episode, we will be self-sufficient in educating our populace. We're doing extremely well, and this is a lot of fun. But if you enjoyed the video, please do consider leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link, as I always say at the end of every video. And, uh, I guess subscribe if you're new. Whatever. But thanks for coming. Bye, guys. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.